okay so the jay white stuff um okay so i have not spoken to jay white but this is and and new japan is not saying anything which makes me think it's an angle and it probably is but when aw was forming so this would be late 2018 obviously you know they wanted jay white because all those guys work with him they all knew how good he is we all knew you know we've known for years you know even before he got the push how good jay white and, and you know how, how good jay white's potential was and how good he is so i mean he's better now but and he told them when they were trying you know when they talked to him and this is uh, late 2018 that he said he signed a seven-year contract in 2018 i said i just signed a seven-year contract so i don't know if that's true but i know that's what he said so you know you can take it from there as far as you know all this stuff you know i mean as far as like if the contract's up if every company in the world should want the guy you know um i mean i he really he really of of, of all the people i thought um at, at at the uh wrestle kingdom the two guys who i thought really um made an impact in a big way as far as oh my god were jay white and jeff cobb i just thought those guys just because kota bushi is as good as you know I, we all know how good he is we all know how good okada is we all know how good will osprey is we all know how good hiromu is you know but but Jeff Cobb really showed something and Grandy's working with Shingo Takaki looks like his absolute perfect opponent just for his style and Jay you know um the one thing that you know Jay's a great he, he's a great technical wrestler he's a great storyteller and he's a great promo um he's not what I would call super flashy with moves but everything he does he does so well it's so crisp and um and i haven't loved a lot of you know all the jay white matches this year it's he's been hit and hit and miss for me but i mean the one thing that he showed is that when the chips are down on the big show i mean he is freaking great if you're wwe and aew roh as well we we met like we mentioned on the kevin kelly show that we did you and i both know Jeff Cobb personally. So we know how badly he wanted to work for New Japan. But at the same time, if you're WWE and you're AEW, how do you let that guy slip out of your hands? Well, you know, AEW tried to sign him. They didn't I mean, try hard he, enough. I don't know. They tried. Maybe, maybe they and did. He, I mean, I mean, I mean, the, when he did the match with Moxley, he had a great match with Moxley. They, they, they wanted him. And um, I remember, you know, uh, messaging with Jeff and Jeff was kind of like, you know, I, I got the impression that, in, that that Jeff was 100 percent New Japan. Yeah. I mean, I, I sort of figured that, too. You know, that's where he wants to be. And, and he's a great fit there, especially now, especially now, right now with that in that group that he's in, because um, they're going to get they're going to get a big push this year, even though they all, all three lost at the Tokyo Dome, but they're going to get a big push. And when you're side by side with Will Ospreay and you're the power guy with Will Ospreay, who you know they're going to build the whole company around or, or one of the one of the key guys, and you're going to be his his backup and his tag team partner, you're going to be in a pretty good... And, and they'll, you know, I mean, Okan, you know, for all the good and bad, you can say they're always going to take care of him because he's one of their own. So he's in a great position right now. So, um, I mean, yeah, but there's, you know, at the same time, you know, there there probably is the way he could make more money elsewhere. But he, um, you know, I mean, I mean he's we're just years, ta we're he's, just talking about Roman Reigns. They can't find a guy to face him at their second biggest pay per view of the year, and and there's this other guy who is living in the United States who is a top, you know, a top free agent, and he just decides to go to New Japan, like. I, not not to say that they could have gotten him or if they threw every kind of you know dollar amount at him but he like he was there he was available they didn't get him they could clearly well, be they using didn't, him didn't, didn't they didn't did, okay and, and you, you may okay what i had heard because he, he did he, jeff cobb did try it with wwe a couple years ago yeah that was a little while ago yeah, yeah but then they thought he was too old that was like the knock on him was he was too but old. I, but I thought he won like all the drills and stuff. He did win all the drills. 
<laughs> he did win all the drills. But athletically, he blew everybody away. They decided not to, you know, but they had a different mentality. They probably thought too short. Who knows what they thought? You know, now, you know, that was during the era when they had a very, you know, that very narrow view of who could be a main eventer. And now it's their views are a lot are a lot less narrow because wrestling's changed. Um, but um, yeah, you know, it's funny. You know, it's like it's like jeff cobb for a lot of reasons i could see jeff cobb and roman reigns not only having great matches but being a great program especially if he had the right guy um the right manager and things like that to to pull it off because he's so powerful looking and that's what roman reigns needs an opponent plus he can you know but i don't know if they would ever get there because look at all the guys who was it uh, so, so like did you you know like look at keith lee perfect example i mean Think about this. Remember when Keith Lee was in the Royal Rumble and he was stood up next to Brock Lesnar and the place went crazy and he'd mm-hmm. never even been on the main roster. And look at him now. You know, it's like it's like I I didn't think Keith Lee was a can't miss, but I know people who did. I did think some guys were can't misses that completely missed. I mean, it's just it's, you know, so it's like, yeah, we can go and say this, but they might have screwed him up and Vince might have might have just gone. He's too short. And, and God, who God only knows. Personally, God I th- only knows. I personally, I think Jeff made the right decision. I'm just saying, like, if you're I think for his top, happiness, he, I think for his happiness, he made the right decision. If I mean, if you're the top organization and there's this guy here who is obviously, you know, somebody who could be a, a, a top guy for you and you just go, oh, he's, you know, we. He, he's going to go to New Japan a couple of years ago. They pa- well now. Yeah, but now it's different. You know, now, I mean, now now that New Japan, you know, is is I don't know that they consider New Japan a threat, but they obviously did a couple of years ago and and tried to grab everybody. Um, and but now they want every you know, they want everybody, even if they just stockpile them, they want them. So, I mean, like now, yeah, they would sign Jeff in a heartbeat. But, um, you know. And and I'm sure that they've talked. You know, Regal knows him, so they know him for sure. Um, but yeah, I think I think that he's exactly where he wants to be, and and um, happy. And you know, you don't especially now. I mean, don't don't underrate happiness. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. You know, I mean, I know a lot of people go, oh, you know, take the money, and it's like, you know, everyone's different. But I mean, I know. You know, whether they're whether it's people there or or, you know, and, and you, you know, it too, you know, rich people who are miserable and that they would be happy if things changed, you know, and it's not money. Um, you know, it, there's there's all kinds of different motivating, motivating things. But if you love your job um, and, you know, that's that's a great way to live life. If you love your job, if you hate your job, even if you're making a lot of money doing it, uh, your life still is going to suck. I mean, that's the reality. I, I think the G1, I think Wrestle Kingdom, I think those were the boxes that Jeff wanted to tick off. And he still probably has, you know, tons of other goals there that that he still wants to to tick off. So I, I think he made the right decision. I'm sure he feels like he made the right decision. I just it's just one of those things where, you know, you're just like that that was one that that I think I feel like both companies probably uh let slip away. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio. We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 Audio shows at your fingertips.